and the tallest son of Edward the Elder. He was accepted as King of Mercia, and his brother was accepted as King of Wessex after the death of their father in 924. Three weeks later, Athelstan's brother died, and Athelstan wanted to become the next King of Wessex, but the people were hesitant to accept him because his mother may or may not have been of noble birth. They finally accepted him several months later. Now that he ruled both kingdoms, he was the king of the Anglo-Saxons. Athelstan in 927 conquered York, taking it from the Vikings. This made him the first Anglo-Saxon ruler of Britain. He then had the title of King of the English. In 934, he made Constantine II, King of Scotland, submit to him. In 937, the Scottish and the Vikings invaded but were defeated at the Battle of Brunaburg. Athelstan died later that year and the Vikings retook York. During his rule, he built on the legal reforms his grandfather Alfred the Great made. He centralized government and he founded several churches. Athelstan is considered to be one of the great Anglo-Saxon kings. Edmund I was the third son of Edward the Elder. When Edmund was accepted as king, part of Mercia, the Midlands, was ruled by Olaf Guthrison and Northumbria by Ragnall Guthrison and Olaf of York. After the death of Olaf in 942, Edmund retook the Midlands and in 944 he retook Northumbria. Instead of conquering York, he became godfather to its ruler, Olaf of York. In 945, he conquered Strathclyde, but gave it back to Malcolm I of Scotland in exchange for a treaty 
of mutual military support. On May 26, 946, while attending St. Augustine's Mass, he was assassinated by an exiled thief named Leofa. Edmund was known as the Just, the Deed-Doer, the Elder, and the Magnificent. Edred was the last son of Edward the Elder. During his reign, he lost Northumbria when Eric Bloodaxe conquered it in 947. And in 954, Edred retook Northumbria. Later in his life, Edred suffered from digestive issues. It is said that when eating, he would suck the juices out of his food, chew his food a while, and then spit it out. On St. Clement's Day in 955, Edred passed away from his unknown digestive illness.
was accepted as king when he was just 15 years old. In his short reign, he feuded with nobles and churchmen. According to legend, one of these men was an abbot named Dunstan. The story goes that Edwig had missed an important meeting with some nobles, and Dunstan went to see where the young king went. He found him with a noblewoman named Elf Gifhu. Edwig refused to leave, and this infuriated Dunstan. Dunstan dragged Edwig back and made him renounce Elf Gifhu. Soon realizing that he had angered the king, Dunstan fled to his cloister, but Edwig plundered the monastery, and Dunstan fled England. Dunstan wouldn't return until Edwig's death. Edwig married Elf Gifhu, but later it was annulled because the young couple were third cousins once removed. After ruling for almost four years, on October 1st, 959, at the age of 19, Edwig died from unknown causes. Edgar was known as the peaceful or the peaceable because his reign was indeed peaceful. His first act as king was to recall Dunstan from exile and he made him an archbishop. Edgar unified and stabilized the country after his older brother Edwig's unpopular reign. At 29 or 30 he was coronated and so was his wife 
Elfthrith, which set a tradition for future queens to be coronated. Edgar, personally, wasn't that peaceful. In 960 or 961, Edgar took a noblewoman named Wolfthrith from a nunnery and took her to his residence in Kimsing. Soon after, she gave birth to their daughter, Eadgith. Dunstan told him not to wear his crown for seven years as penance. In 963, Edgar might have killed a romantic rival named Earl Ethelwald. Edgar passed away on July 8, 975 in Winchester, Hampshire. Hello.